Chicago's only News Talk Radio. News Talk 89 WLS. It's a very special Rowan Gary show on lipstick. Well, I, I don't follow these stories. I just don't understand. Another story today in the New York Post. They're copying a story out of the Star magazine. There was a story on Nightline last night talking about how bad the reporting has been on this Monica Lewinsky. Zippergate, Oozle in the White House. Because nobody's checking any facts. Right. Only 1% of the stories in the press concerning this are actually journalistically considered sound. yeah considered sound because one percent they have two sources one percent according to canons of journalism one must have two independent sources to confirm a story jim you're a journalist you should know that is that the way they taught you in school yeah but the only problem is uh both can be wrong well, that's true but that's true with that at least you made the attempt. At least you got two independent sources saying the same thing. And a lot of reporters say they do that, but they don't. If you get something that's good enough, you see a story that says uh, high sources, that might be like an assistant to the president. One, one guy. Yeah. Well, anyway, the but point is that only 1% of the stories have had two independent sources in this. 38% have had one independent name source. And the remainder, which is what... Uh, 62% or something they were saying last night. I don't remember the exact numbers now. Were either opinion pieces that had no sources <laughs> or pieces that were that that had unnamed sources. I and mean, there's been a ton of unnamed sources. That's goofy because somebody has an axe to grind and a network goes with it. It's insane. It's funny, having just said that, that Richard Jewell is the only guy that went on that litigious ride of suing everybody that said he was the bomber. And all this is happening and all these people aren't public figures. Well, the problem here is who can sue in this case? Well, not until all the facts come out, whatever they may be. Well, even at this point, who could you see suing? The president's going to sue? No, he'll never sue. No, he doesn't want to go near a courtroom again. No. Monica Lewinsky? No, because the, the tapes exist. Well, she could say she lied. Yeah, but then then there's no Those basis tapes for a taken lawsuit. Those illegally. She is but, but, suing, by the way. She is suing. I, I did read that she is going to sue... Linda Tripp for right. a lot of money. My point is, Richard Jewell goes on that march with the lawyer and gets money from NBC and other places. And you would think that just happened a year ago. With all this that's happening, there'd be more of that happening as far as lawsuits. Well, but Richard Jewell was just a, a hero plucked out who took his heroism a little too seriously for about six hours and all of a sudden became but the focus attack of an investigation. But the by the media was as severe as what's happening with some of these other stories that have come down since then. It's just interesting that more lawsuits have not been filed, although there may be after this is all said and done. I don't think so, because, you know what, even if the reporting has been horrible on this story, and I will grant you that it has, I still believe every word of it. Not only this story, but other stories that have come out since the Richard Jewell case that we've been talking about for two years. Okay, throw one on the Barbie. Who, what, what, which one? Who, who should be suing? Well, if the Ramseys are innocent, don't they have a suit? Don't you think? Doesn't that say something right there? That they're not suing? Yeah. Yes, it does. To me, it indicates something, yes. Because they seem to have a suit there if, in fact, they are not They don't want to go to murderers. court. Right. And that's defense. the thing. That's the thing. Why? That's why you should sue a lot because, and it's a horrible thing to say. But if you are a situ in a situation like this, even if you, let's, can I just assume for the sake of an argument here? Let's assume that the Ramses are guilty of the crime, just for the sake of an argument. Even if you're guilty, you sue. No, oh, anybody can sue anybody. But a, a civil judgment, as O.J. Simpson has learned is a much different thing than a criminal judgment. Because in a civil judgment, even if the Ramses were innocent of the, of the murder, there still could be, they, they could still lose that civil suit. It was only because Richard Jewell was obviously the wrong guy. The only time that, to answer your question, why did he sue and prevail, is because he never went into a courtroom with those suits. Those suits were never, no jury ever saw those. Every single one of those entities, NBC, Rolled over. CNN, CBS, I think, did. I'm not... Wait, I, I better retract it because I'm not sure that's true. <laughs> Check your sources. Here you go. Yeah. Uh, NBC. All right, NBC, CNN. Let's just stay with the NBC and maybe cost a newspaper. Right. But uh, they figured, well, you know what? They this is going to cost more to fight, and we really don't have a lot of backup. They blah, blah, blah. tossed the money at him because they realized they he had him dead to rights because they were wrong. He's the wrong guy. 
and that's the way it goes. Let's go to Jim's news, see how accurate that is. A disgruntled employee has opened fire at the Connecticut Lottery headquarters. Four dead, including the head of the lottery there. The gunman then killed himself. A Hickory Hills woman here in the Chicago area accused of suffocating her baby for the $200,000 insurance policy. I've got to stop you right there for a second. Well, what? cut your mic. You want to stop me? I'm sorry. He killed four, four and then himself. But he said four dead. It should be five dead. And then he killed himself. Five dead. He shot four people plus then one. Then he killed himself. And killed himself. That so that'd be five. I'm just fact-checking here. Thank you. All of a sudden, you're Mr. 1%. He, killed, he shot four. Four victims of murder, one suicide to make five dead. Correct. Five dead. Thank you. Uh, interesting cases. Hickory Hills woman accused of suffocating her baby in 95. She was charged by federal officials. Now, federal murder charges are very rare. They use the federal mail fraud laws. They can't get uh, death, but she could face life in prison. New unemployment figures, the president's smiling today. Fewer people out of work. The unemployment rate stands at 4.6%, the lowest in decades. And a 14-year-old girl babysitting last night on West 61st Street. When she didn't come home, her parents went over to check on her. Family found her shot dead in the apartment where she was babysitting. The children she was babysitting for okay. No suspects in custody. Traffic and weather next. WLS News Time, 337. I tell you, used to be with seven cents you could feed your family for a week. Seven cents. What's that going to get you now? Introducing the Anytime Anywhere offer from AT&T Digital PCS with local call rates as low as seven cents a minute. Back then, we had... You can communicate with us on the WLS Ace Hardware fax line at 312-984-5283. Or if you'd like to send something via our webpage, WLSAM.com. We're covered. All the technology is right here. Can Bruce Willis do what Ronald McDonald couldn't? Story in the Wall Street Journal. Right? I don't know. Ask Demi Moore. McDonald's is making... Is that a, all you got, you clown? McDonald's is making a marketing mega bet that after defending Earth from an approaching asteroid in the upcoming Disney film Armageddon... Bruce Willis will find a way to move burgers and fries. Until now, the fast food giant has used Disney magic mainly to tighten its grip on the kids' market, which it would still dominates. But McDonald's, as we all now know, has been trying to create a market with young adults and adults. Remember when they dressed up Ronald McDonald? Made they him uh, more hip. Right. Sent him to the country club. They put him in a... Discotheque. Right, Exactly. Sipping martinis. Dueling skyrockets. Soul-kissing women. Who was the other guy? Who was the other clown? Uh, he was... Well, he was in the middle. As, it was, no, it was not dueling skyrockets. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Uh, he they, would have to be... If I'm not mistaken, I think McDonald's has even signed Monica Lewinsky to star in a few commercials well, with there, Ronald McDonald. Well, there are several Ronalds. They have one that does shopping center openings and commercials, so you can right. do dueling skyrockets. Thank you. Anyway, see the, do you see the length we will go to try to make one joke work? That's what they were doing with that campaign. I'm not making this stuff up. According to an internal they marketing... They driving a race car, you remember? Yes. According to an internal uh, marketing memo, McDonald's is planning an extraordinary six-week promotion beginning in early July, complete with prizes such as Meet Bruce Willis, a trip to the 1999 Academy Awards, and memorabilia from the upcoming film Armageddon. What they're trying to do is hit a market here that they haven't been able to hit, which is somebody over the age of 12. They've had trouble with this. Now, if, for McDonald's, for kids, kids under 12, McDonald's is a hit. Slam home run hit. But Burger King has really cut into the adult market. And the Arch Deluxe line, which was, which was intended to try to niche into the adult market, has been a well, failure. They did it at the expense of turning off their young customer it's not for you kids it's an adult burger what does it taste like to make it an adult burger watch your mouth i know what you're thinking no i mean that was kind of interesting in that it's a hamburger what could it taste like that would be specifically for adults and not for kids well a lot of the local franchises have dropped the arch line completely and some of the franchises have even swapped the fish filet deluxe with the filet fish sandwich that had been previously replaced. filet fish that was always one of their big sellers, especially during Lent, right? Yeah. Isn't that a big McDonald's seller during because Lent? Because if you're a real good Catholic, you do not eat meat on Friday right. during Lent. 
And some Catholics take that even beyond Friday. They yeah, they, they will just, not eat meat during Lent at all. Right. So the so fillet of fish was always a big deal for them, and then they had it. Then basically McDonald's just stumbled big time. They were running, running, running. Those big floppy shoes got in Ronald's way. He fell all over himself with the Arch Deluxe line because that was a, it was just dumb. They were trying to go after the Whopper thing because the Whopper is a bigger sandwich than the Quarter Pounder with cheese or the Big Mac with which it competes. And so and it was more of an adult kind of hamburger. It had the charbroiled taste and mayonnaise on it. It had things that kids, kids don't like that? Well, that don't test as well with kids as the kind of sweet, sugary, non-offensive taste of the McDonald's Bring hamburgers. back the McRib. Just bring back the McRib and everybody's happy. I love the McRib. Oh, yeah. Even those four little pieces of onion on top. They were like scientifically designed little pieces and of onion. And how they pressed that piece of meat to look like it had ribs in there, I'll never know. But <laughs> bring it back. Anyway, they, they're, so that's where they are. That's where McDonald's is. They've, they've made this mistake, and now they're once again trying to market to, kid, to adults. Stop. Market to kids. Why would you even want to market to adults? That kids, I don't get. Kids will keep you alive. Don't worry about it. Yeah. They'll spend a lot of money at your place. Well, they're all upset because Burger King has made a big big run at them. And even, even Burger King has now come after them with a Big Mac kind of sandwich, which I have not had. Burger King redid their fries to make them kind mm -hmm. of crusty on the outside. Like and, McDonald's. Yeah. And uh, make them a little saltier. McDonald's made a huge mistake. We talked about this before. McDonald's biggest mistake was when they changed their French fries. To me, well, actually, there's three mistakes I can point to in McDonald's marketing completely. One, when the Shamrock Shake tasted more like Maalox than like vanilla. Originally, the Shamrock Shake, this time of year, was just a vanilla shake with green coloring in it. That's all it should be. That's all it was meant to be. Bang, that should have been it. Then all of a sudden, they went with a Maalox kind of taste. They tried to go minty on you, and you went, oh, my God. <laughs> Puh. Am I nauseous? Why am I? Puh. Why am I doing this? All right. That's mistake number one. Mistake number two, taking the tallow out of the deep fryer for the french fries. When I go to a fast food place, I'm not thinking healthy. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about healthy. Exactly. It's fast food. That's exactly the point. If I want to eat healthy, I'll do something else. And then allowing the PMRC, that marketing, that, um, that, that food safety group. No, I'm sorry, the PMRC, that's the record labelers. <laughs> they all blend. PETA? <laughs> no, who's the group? The group that always says Pata? one Puta? One box of movie popcorn is like 16 Big Macs. Allowing that group to continually use the Big Mac as a negative selling point. I love the Big Mac. Big Mac's still one of my favorite sandwiches. Don't I don't take that. that. Don't let anybody throw stuff at you like and that. First of all, when you see that, when you find out that a box of movie popcorn is as bad as 16 Big Macs, I'd rather have one Big Mac. Than a box of popcorn. I thought I was eating the popcorn because it was good but for me. But who thought that eating any of that stuff was super healthy in the first right. place? You don't eat that because you want to feel healthy. You eat it because it's great comfort food. Right. You get, you fit right into Wisconsin. You'll hear them in the salad bar and the supper club. I want the yeah. lard. A guy in a big flannel shirt. I want the lard. I want the prime rib. Yeah. I don't want worry the... about me. It's my life. Right. I want to ruin it. Right. Double sour Goodbye. cream. Oh, and a macho and like... guy will just say, put a marble right in my heart, too. Just inject like, it. Oh, come on. Like... When you go to McDonald's and you're standing in the line, you're going, I wonder if I can taste some calories here. My wife gets the salad. Now, here's the thing. No dressing. That Wendy's and Burger King did make in. Well, Wendy's specifically made inroads on the salad thing. They were the first ones to do the salad bar and do that. And they do that well. But you see, the thing is, there's enough for everybody to go around here. McDonald's acts like somehow Wendy's and Burger King is going to all go away. It's not. It's not going to go away. They, McDonald's has their niche. They will never be the dominant like they were in the 1970s, it was McDonald's, that was it. It was, there were no questions asked. No competition. You, you, just, you know, you go down the street, it was McDonald's. Burger King was there, but not as big a competitor. Right. People didn't really go in as much. And Burger King was more of an urban entity than a, than a rural entity, as McDonald's was, you know, very suburban look, look at, and rural. Look at White Castle, how they are. They don't try to have a million stores. They know what they're all about. That's right. They put them where they want them, and they make sure that everything is going right with the one store before they open another. They're not going to have 50,000 stores. And you know exactly what you're going to get, and they're happy to service you there. Does White Castle own its stores? I think they do. I think they do, too. I don't think those are franchises. I don't I think, think they, they expand them. unless they're profitable in all their stores. They're very careful about that, and that's right. fine. They're, they're still money. around. They're happy. 
Right. McDonald's is still expanding. I mean, you'll I still see, see Roe on Sunday coming. after church sitting there in White Castle with the plate of hamburgers and a cup of coffee <laughs> in his leatherette jacket. He's happy. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> At me at. I do that a lot on Sundays at, at the White Castle. Oh, wait, you're joking. White Castle, when you got a hangover? Well, you go into White Castle. You know, what, you know what's good down? about a White Castle? Is it's open 24 hours. Yeah. That's why you go There's to no White Castle. There's no joking here. You go into a White Castle at 3 They're o'clock in the, in the morning. Right. You've been on an all-night toot. You want to stop at White Castle yeah. for about six, there, maybe a dozen, mm -hmm. and there's and coffee. And there's a guy, <laughs> and there's always a guy back there, because oh. they're open at 3 o'clock yeah. in the morning. There's With one the guy that, you know, that smells bad sitting in the seat there eating his hamburgers going, what are you at? And, and they it, can't get rid of the guy. And it's well lit, and you're looking out the window, yeah. and yeah. you eat the hamburger and have the Come cup on. of coffee. So no, if you're McDonald's, if you are McDonald's, don't mess around with this. Go for the kids. When I was a kid, I used to sit on Saturday mornings, watch the cartoons on CBS, and then Kukla, Fred, and Ollie would come on on CBS, and they'd introduce some Japanese movie with a fat kid in it. And they'd run a commercial for McDonald's. I remember this clear as a bell. I'm eight years old. I'm watching this this Kukla, Fred, and Ollie movie, and this McDonald's commercial would come on, the dancing fries, Mary McCheese. I would get a panic. I was like a heroin addict. You had to have and it. I, had, I, I, would, I would go pound on my mother until she would take me. She'd pile me into the car and then take me up to McDonald's, which then, now, you can't go more than two blocks without finding McDonald's, right? Then we had to have to travel. We oh, to the miles. old days. We, we didn't have them on every street corner. No, we had to go five miles to they find They didn't have drive throughs You had to go in. So we went into the McDonald's, and I was always mad because Ronald never came to my McDonald's that I would always go to. And so the, and it's so funny because the McDonald's that I always go to now is like one of the oldest McDonald's that there is now in Chicago. In the city? In the city, yeah. It was the one on, um, it's on Clark Street. Clark and Wrightwood. That area, or hmm. north of Wrightwood, what is that? Okay, all right. You know what I'm talking about. All right, about. they got a plaque for you. Okay, fine. So, that's where I get beat up by my, uh, oh, by your, my grandmother. Oh, your two aunts? Yeah, my, my great aunt, and, yeah. When you uh, got the wrong order in your leader hose, and they beat the snot out of you with the bag of hamburgers? Yes. And the right. hamburgers were flying all over the car? Oh, great. Yeah, that was I the love McDonald's that memory. right there. 591-8900, let's talk fast food. It's Friday. Good time to talk about food. Tina's on WLS. Hi, Tina. And this is the reason you should always say grace before you eat, because you don't know what you're getting. And uh oh God here we go. <laughs> yeah, I think this is trouble. No, I was just saying to Hit your, the your producer that I, I worked at the uh, agency that did the big Arch Deluxe promotion. A huge chunk of change poured into that. Um, but they added something on it. That was the old McDonald's agency, right? Yeah. They no, no longer have that agency, do the they? The agency that had the dancing McNuggets? Well, actually, no. The swimming McNuggets? The <laughs> McNuggets on the beach? And... <laughs> I don't want food that has legs coming out. What I don't know what they were thinking. To, what they tried to do was give you a, a Dijonese type of thing, and that's what was wrong. It had like a Dijon mustard mixed with mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. Kids don't like that. Yeah, I mean, it was. It, they thought it was, a, is, you know, a world league because now Americans travel. So let's put some... Put I, some I want... I went in the other, day, the other uh, weekend. My wife and I were up down the north side doing something. And I, I had, we were both really hungry. Mm -hmm. And there was just the golden arches were there in the distance. And it was just one of those impulse things. We pulled in. I wanted a quarter pounder with cheese. That's all I wanted. Mm -hmm. I just want a quarter pounder with cheese. Because now everything has to be packaged at McDonald's. Well, God, you can't just no. get it anymore. No. You have to. It's got to get a super size this. You got to do that. It's complicated. It's, I don't want yeah. complicated. Simplicity is best, but they, for some reason, they're trying to do. They're doing overkill. Yes, it's fine. It is what it is. It, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what they what built their fortune hold. on. All of a sudden, they got to get fancy. Just, right. Right. Just do it. Don't do the shotgun approach and hope something sticks. Yeah. No. It's a hamburger. It's fries. It's a coke. <laughs> that's it. Write it out. Appeal to the kids because it really for kids That's exactly because it is the least offensive of all. The, it has the least amount of taste, really. One of these days, and you know the terrible part about it is it's 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 a lot of young people who run McDonald's now. So it's it's all the old guys are gone. So it's young folks who are, are trying to do the next big. No, thing. no, don't go next big. They don't have the knowledge of the older guys. Go with exactly. what you got. It's exactly. fine. Go with go with what it is. Yeah. And, and Burger guys, King. Look, Burger King's doing fine, but eventually Burger King will stumble. They'll do something goofy. Absolutely. Right? Wendy's will do something goofy. Just hang back and do what you do best. But yes, I this no. is America. No, we can all have something. <laughs> we can all share. That's right. During the E. coli scare. You tell them. Preach, gentlemen. Right. Right. We will. Thank all you, right. Tina. Thank you. During the E. coli scare, a number of Burger King franchises got hit because they were going to that one purveyor, right? Didn't hurt them a bit. Because they just 
went right on because they got the good marketing thing going because, you know, they're the ones doing the next big thing. McDonald's can't outrun them right now. They got the momentum. McDonald's sit back and go, hey, you know what? We're for the kids. We take we're, them. we're for everybody. Don't say we're marketing to this or that. We're just for everybody. Right. You like hamburgers and stuff? We got it. You grew up loving it? Come on back. And by the way, put the animal fat back in the french fries. Chance of rain tomorrow, 40s. Here's Jenny. Well, I don't know about you, but I was disappointed when they got McLean Burger. Well, see, oh, you sorry. don't need that. You want healthy? Stay away yeah. from fast food. Not healthy. I thought it tasted good. Eat oh. your Venetian blinds. McLean. You don't go to a fast food. McLean <laughs> salad and a Diet Coke. <laughs> no, I got the McLean with the large fry and the Diet Pepsi. Yeah. So forget about it. All right. Tri-State Tollway Southbound.